Good morning, artists. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, as you know, on March 8th, yeah, on Monday, it was National Women Day. And actually, March is National Women Month. So all this month, we're going to be learning about women and female artists. So this week, we're going to learn about Georgia O'Keeffe. So here's a little quote by Georgia O'Keeffe. It says, I've, abs I've been absolutely terrified every moment of my life, and I've never let it keep me from doing a single thing that I wanted to do. Wow, have you guys ever been scared? I know I have. And no matter what, it says Georgia O'Keeffe, no matter how scared she was, she still did it. And I think that shows what a good leader is, which is one of our characteristics at SST. So here's a little bit more information. I'll read it to you, but you can always watch the YouTube video that has more information. So it says Georgia O'Keeffe was an American artist. Georgia's most famous paintings were large scale impressions of flowers and plants. Her paintings of flowers were very colorful and often showed details of the flower. She also painted New York skyscrapers and New Mexico landscapes. Has anyone ever been to New Mexico or New York? I haven't. Um, okay, so here's a couple fun facts. She took private art lessons from a local artist and found that she liked painting with watercolors. Have you guys ever used watercolors? It's one of my favorite things to um, paint with. Um, even at an early age of 12, she knew she wanted to become an artist. One of her paintings sold for over $44 million. Oh my goodness. In 2014. She liked to draw silly pictures of her teachers when she was in school. That's cool. What do you guys think of Georgia O'Keeffe's work? From looking at a, here's a couple pictures of her work here. And then here's some examples of some students' work who've tried to, um, make art just like Georgia O'Keeffe, which is something that we're going to do today. So today, we're going to make our own flowers. So here's some examples of some other students who have um, tried to make Georgia O'Keeffe flowers. So we're not going to be using watercolors, we're actually going to be using crayons and colored markers. So I want you guys to go ahead and get your white paper out, some colorful crayons and some colored markers. Okay, let's get started. Right, so I have my big old bucket of markers. I have my crayons and I have my white paper. So I'm gonna move my materials aside and I wanna talk to you guys about the color wheel. So do you guys know what warm colors are and cool colors are? Yes, okay. So warm colors are, that's right. So over here are our warm colors. So our warm colors are colors like red, orange, and yellow. And then our cool colors are on the other side of the color wheel, which are green, blue, and purple. And then I have some other, here's another example. So we got some warm crayons, which is our reds and yellows, and then our cool crayons, blue, greens, and purples. And then some neutral colors are like white, black, and browns and creams, almost like different skin colors are neutral colors, like skin tones. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our own flowers, but I want you guys to pick either a warm color or a cool color. So that means that you can do your flower that is yellow, orange, and red, or it can be purples, blues, and greens. That's up to you. Or if you wanna do neutral colors, you can do that too. So let's go ahead and pick. I am feeling cool colors today. So that means that I'm going to do purple, blues, and greens. So I'm gonna pick my colors, I'm gonna look through my markers. I'm gonna grab some blues. I'm not sure which ones work. So I'm gonna grab a couple of each color that I see. These markers are from last year. You know, if you don't close the cap, the marker will dry out. 
So sometimes we have old markers up in here. Oh, should I pick up this red? No, because I'm doing cool colors. So while I'm picking out my colors, I want you guys to pick whether you're gonna do warm or cool colors. If you need help, here's our warm colors, here's our cool colors. I want you to pick and get your colors out and ready to go. So you can grab some markers, and then I also want you to grab some crayons, okay? So I'm gonna grab some blue crayons. While I pick mine, I want you to pick yours. And I want you to put the extra away, okay? Okay, so I have all of my materials ready. I have my cool crayons and I have my cool markers. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with our markers. So you can pick any color that you want. And we are going to start drawing our flower. So Georgia O'Keeffe, she, when she made her flowers, she zoomed in on them. That means that she didn't draw them far away. She drew them right up close so you would see the inside, um, you could see the petal and you the petals and then the inside of the flower. So we're going to try our best to zoom in on our flower and make a large flower. So I would suggest picking maybe the darkest color or the lightest one. I think I'm gonna start with the lightest. I'm gonna start with the green. And the first thing we're gonna do is pick a place. So we can start with making a circle in the middle of the page. And this is going to be the inside of our flower. And then we're going to add petals all around. So your petals are going to be, here's my practice board. You guys can watch me practice make my petals, okay? So your petals, we have our circle. Your petals should be like big curves. You guys know what petals look like, right? And so we're gonna do petals all around. And do you see how big the petals are? They take up the whole page, okay? So that's really what we're going to do. All right, so here's my, this is my practice board. So now I'm going to practice, I'm gonna do it on my real white piece of paper. So I can take my light color again, or I am, or you can switch to a different color to do your petals. If you want your petals to be different colors, you can do that too. So I am going to start making big petals. I'm gonna fill the whole page with my petals. Remember your petal has to have two lines. So if you want your petals to be thin, they can be thin. Or if you want them to be bigger, they can be bigger. It's up to you. Okay, and your petals do not have to look like my petals. I just want you to try your best, okay? Okay, so now that we have our petals drawn, we can add some more detail. So when we look, let's show you another example. Oh, ooh, look at this one. Do you see how Georgia O'Keeffe has these? It's all one color, but do you see how she has these little lines? and hints of green, and it's really close up on the flower petals. So we're going to try our very, very best to add some little lines with marker to add a little detail to our flower. So I'm gonna stick to using the blue. You guys can use whatever color that you have, but remember, we're only doing warm and cool colors. So I'm gonna add some lines to my petals, okay? So let me show you actually on my practice board. So when you add your lines, you wanna add them in the middle of your petal, and then you can add some short lines going up. And this is, it almost looks like a leaf, right? Or some petals like roses are a little wavy. So you can add some wavy lines if you would like. Um, also, in the inside, if you want to add some details by adding some dots 
or some waves on the inside. What do we think about that? And then we're gonna add our lines all around, okay? So I am done practicing, so I'm going to move on to my final one, okay? And I'm gonna stick with my glue. And I'm gonna add a few lines. I like it more um, when the lines are straight on the petals and wavy on my inside circle. But you guys can do what you think. If you want to add more petals in the back, you can do that too. This is your flower. And since it was Women's Day, wouldn't it be nice to give this flower to someone, to a woman for National Women's Day? I know it's a little late, but you guys can still do that. Or you can give it to your mom or grandmother or your aunt or your teacher if your teacher's a woman. I think they would really appreciate that. So we're just gonna add some lip lines here. We're gonna keep adding lines. You can add little short lines. You can add lines on the side, because these are just gonna be details. And then we're going to use our crayons, once we're done with our marker, to add color. So I'm gonna go back with my blue, my green, sorry. And I'm going to make my ways all around. Then I have one more marker. So the extra marker I'm gonna use to add a little pattern in my background. So, hmm, I think I wanna do like more petals. So I'm gonna make little lines that looks like petals in my background. So this could be for a different flower or the same flower. You guys can do other lines if you want. If you want to do zigzag lines, or if you just want to color in the space, that's up to you, okay? Because when we look at this example, you see some kids colored in the space, some kids made a pattern, okay? It's up to you, okay? But do you see how these are warm? For the most part, and then this is cool, okay? All right, so I'm going to finish my bag. Now, once I'm done with my marker, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to add color. So I'm going to use my crayons to fill in the space whatever color I want. Even though I used a green, here, I can still, a green marker here, I can fill this in with whatever color I want, guys. So I want you guys to get creative. I see on here that some kids added little dots to show like the little pollen inside of the flower. You guys can do that too, okay? So let's get creative, let's have some fun and color in our flower. You want to try to color inside the lines, right? So one thing I like to do, the little trick, is I like to color on top of wherever I did my marker first, kind of darker, and you see, and then I color lightly over it. And it almost makes shading. Shading is like um, different parts that are light and dark in an object. Like when you look at your hand, like my hand, it's not all one color, right? You guys see how it's darker here, it's a little lighter here, a little lighter there. That's what shading is. But you guys will learn more about that as you get older and as we learn more and more about art. You guys will definitely learn more about shading. Some of the kiddos that I had last year know a little bit about shading. But let's keep coloring. 
And remember to try to stay inside of your lines. Sometimes I like to do, um, after I trace over the dark parts, dark, I kind of color in a circle motion. It helps me to color everything in really small circles. Okay, so I got my flower colored in. If I want, I do have another blue. I can go back over on top. If I have time, guys, um, you don't have to, but if you have time, you can always add more color. You guys know that the things that I look for is a page that's full of color. It shows me that you were very interested in the assignment that you worked hard and that you took your time, okay? So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. I'm gonna do it a little quickly. I'm gonna go around. One thing that helps me is when I color, I move the paper to help me, because I'm the artist. I'm in control of the paper, so I just move it around to make it easier for me to color. That's why it's important to have your that's clear and neat so you have enough space to move things around just going all around with this lighter color and this is called blending actually guys that's a part of the shading that i talked about earlier oh my hand is hurting <laughs> okay so i'm going to color this all in So now I'm going to do my green. So once again, I'm going to go all around a little bit darker. I'm gonna go all around with my darker green and I'm gonna kind of mimic the lines. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to take my lighter green and, and color, all, color it all in. What do you guys think so far? Do you think Georgia O'Keefe would be happy? <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna do my background. Oh my goodness, I'm almost done. So I'm gonna take my darker, the darkest purple I have, and I'm gonna go over the lines. Doesn't have to be perfect, remember? I'm just kind of making the lines. So this is gonna help with like a pattern or a texture. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just gonna put those lines all around. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with all of the purple that I have. And even if I still have some white, that's okay too. Uh oh, this purple was darker, I didn't know, but that's okay. I'm gonna keep going all around, spin my paper, up, 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 up. And I'm just filling it in, filling it in. We're almost done. Okay, I got one more purple, I think. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to just go quickly all 
over, filling it in the best that I can. There's a little white, that's okay. It's filling it in the best that I can. I think I'm done. So, now if there's anything that I want to add. So I can even take, I think this is a little blank. A little, um, I think I can add some more over here. So you should do that every time you finish your assignment is look at it and say, hmm, can I add something else? So I actually want to add some purple onto my blue. So sometimes crayons are really hard to mix, so you have to press down a little bit. That's why my hand was hurting. So I'm gonna just press down a little bit and add a little purple on top of my flower. It's in the darker place. This is adding a little value. So my um, older kids, I really, really want you guys to add some shading because you guys learned about that. And then for my younger kindergarten, first and second grade, you guys don't have to go back over it if you want, don't want to. But if you want to challenge yourself, you can. Okay. But remember, I want you to try your best. Always, 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 always try your best. And make a full page. So I think I am done. So did I follow all of the rules? So what did I say? I had to have a cool or warm color. Let's look at our chart. Is this warm or is this cool? That's right, this is cool. So I only use blues, greens, and purples. Good job, Ms. Johnson. And did I fill the page with the flower like Georgia O'Keeffe? I did, I tried my best. It's close up, the page is filled with color. And I think I did a pretty good job. What do you guys think? How did you do for your flower? Awesome. So if you guys were able to finish, I want you to take a picture and don't forget to upload it to Schoology, okay? So this is how you're going to get your credit. I also want to remind you to fill out your exit ticket for today. If you try to do your exit ticket tomorrow, it will not be available, okay? So let's not forget to submit our work onto Schoology. Also, I want you to turn your paper over and I want you to write your name on the back, okay? And if you're gonna give this to someone, you can also write a note on the back for them too. That would be really, really nice. I think they would appreciate that. All right. So next week is spring break. This is perfect introduction to spring break. We did a beautiful flower for National Women's Day. And next week, I'm gonna miss you guys so much, but I'm gonna be working so hard on making more art assignments for you. Um, I cannot wait to see you guys the week after next for our next art class. Um, don't forget, the week after next, we're going to be doing group Picasso will be on the live session and group Mona Lisa will be watching the YouTube video. Okay, so thank you guys so much and I hope you guys have a good day and a good week and happy spring break. Don't forget all of your assignments are due on Friday, okay, by 3 o'clock. At 3 o'clock, it will go away. Please, please, please make sure you submit as much work as you can, okay? All right, bye-bye guys. Have a good day.